Welcome to the Scale Model Geek. This week, I'm building this huge truck. It's the Toyota Hilux from the company Ayoshimi. Hopefully, I've pronounced that correctly. Now, when I went into my local hobby shop, this was the only pickup truck that they had. And also, it's a high lift, which is something I didn't want. But I guess I'm going to try and make the best of it. Now, that truck is actually going to be part of a diorama, a zombie diorama. These are just three of the five figures I'll be using, and I purchased them from CG Trader. And the detail in there is absolutely wonderful. Stunning detail and stunning composition of the walkers. And also I'm going to incorporate some of these soldiers. Now these soldiers are actually used in the Attack of the Spider diorama. And I just resized them to suit the 124 scale diorama. After building the AMT 1940 Ford Coupe, which was originally made in 1960, it was such a pleasure to see the amount of detail incorporated in this kit. After I checked out all the wonderfully crafted pieces, it was time to assemble it. And once I had assembled the chassis per instructions, I noticed there was a few bits and pieces left over on the sprue and it had a second set of suspension. And I realised I actually had an option to lower the suspension and make it into a standard uh, four-wheel drive. And it also had standard drive shafts on the sprue as well. So it wasn't too much of a problem, but I stripped it down and went back to basics and added the standard uh, bits and pieces. As you can also see, there's no more shiny bits left. And what I did there was actually I stripped the chrome off using this Easy Off Heavy Duty Oven Cleaner. Now be very, very careful when you use this stuff. It's very toxic. Make sure you're wearing masks and gloves and do it outdoors. Now with that all done, it was back onto the construction and onto the cab. When I build my dioramas, I have a rough idea of what I want to build. I tend to leave a bit of space in my ideas just in case I get some new ones to incorporate into the build. And sometimes some of these ideas pop in during the construction and really help the final result. Every time I do a build I try and incorporate some new techniques I've never tried before. And I'm kind of hit and miss with these techniques, sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't and sometimes bits and pieces actually um, I end up incorporating into another technique. I'm not really a car person, but I do appreciate the beauty and the engineering that goes into the construction of these vehicles. YouTube likes it when I put up a video at least every fortnight. The problem with that and doing a diorama build is you tend to have to skip on some of the details just to be able to meet that deadline. So I've decided to approach these diorama builds in a slightly different way, just so I can get more detail into the builds. The first video, in this particular case, is the pickup truck. I'll be focusing on the equipment and the second half or rather the second video, I'll spend a bit more time on the actual finishing off the diorama. In Australia, we don't call these pickup trucks, we call them utes, as in utility trucks. Now I'm just weathering up some of these seats, and I've pulled out the Dremel tool, and I'm kind of just scuffing up the edges, and this is just to represent a bit of age on the seats, some of the torn leather work. As you can see, it looks very convincing, and once we get a bit of paint onto it, it's going to look pretty cool. Now onto the painting of the body. I'm using this German red brown for the base coat of the rust. And just giving everything uh, a bit of an even spray of this color. This is the first of three colors that I'll be using for my rust base color. For the final look, I'll be using the hairspray chipping technique. So I need a bit of a, a variation in the color tones of the rust. Second colour for my base tones is this rust from Vallejo. And I'm just going to give it a mottled look and it needs to be pretty uneven. And my third colour is the light rust. And with this coat I'm doing a bit of a mottled look as well, but kind of concentrating also to some of the areas that will get scuffed a bit more. With this colour I'm concentrating more on the edges of the vehicle. And while we're here, let's paint the black areas with this Vallejo black. And we'll do the interior of the cab and the actual seats. You know what, I actually own a spray booth, but I haven't got around to setting it up yet. I've had that for a couple of weeks now. And that's what the rusty base coat looks like. And you can see the mottling of the various shades. It's come up well. 
Now some of this light grey for those torn areas of the black seats. And I'm just going in picking them out. Now to dry brush those, I'm using Panzer Grey from Ammo. And give it a nice heavy dry brush to you know, simulate a bit of wear and tear. I actually used to use purple for these black areas, but it kind of looked a bit cartoony, so I ended up going for the grey. Now the panel line accent colour, just to add a bit more depth to the actual seats. I'm using some of this hairspray that I sprayed into this little bottle, and this will be the coat for the actual chipping effect. Now it doesn't matter what type of hairspray you use, just you know, do a nice even thin coat. And if you want more chipping, more cracking in the paint, just do some extra heavier coats on those areas. Now I tend to focus to the top of the truck, I made it a little bit thicker. If you do it too thick, your top coat will crack, so be careful. Talking about top coat, my main colour for the truck will be this white grey from Vallejo. Now I tend to stick to flat colours because of the ageing of it, and you know, Juco eventually fades. And there's my colour, and you can see the awfully big cracks on top of the roof. But most of that will disappear. Now with the chipping technique, all you need to do is use a bit of water, and just spread it over the top. And that water will soak through the paint onto the hairspray, and it was actually dislodged the paint. For the actual chipping effect, I use a combination of a toothpick, and also a toothbrush. You can see how easily it's coming off. With a thinner coat of hairspray, you do get more control over the chipping, but it does take longer for it to actually chip away. What I'm trying to convey with this particular truck and the weathering is that it's uh, set in the future, hence why I'm using a more of a modern truck, and also a large passage of time has passed, hence the amount of weathering on the actual truck. And you can see, you know, 90% of the paint is gone. The tray of my ute gets the old toothbrush treatment. And once I'm happy with the amount of weathering, it's time to actually paint some of the details of the ute. I'm using some of this chrome from Vallejo. And I'm outlining the windows and also the door handles. With that detailing done, off camera what I've done is actually given a coat of clear flat. Now for the wash, this dark brown from Vallejo. And I'm giving a quick spritz of water, so the actual wash flows a lot easier and evenly. Well, maybe not so evenly. And during this process, I've realized, you know, I actually need to put all the other bits and pieces onto it, like the bumpers, before I do some more weathering. So the tail lights, some of this clear red, and I'm painting on the inside of the clear parts. And I add a bit of red and a bit of orange for the indicators, and super glue them into place. And that's my chrome bits also stuck to the front of the truck, or the ute. I've given those chrome areas a coat of clear flat as well to get rid of the shininess. And with that done, back onto the wash to cover the whole vehicle. Now I'm using this dark rust to add a few streaks to the actual bodywork because you don't want a nice even finish of the rusting. Now I'm using different shades and just washing it in little areas that I think would accumulate a bit more. We have got some of the heavier chipping, I'm just adding a bit more of this wash. I'm just creating various strengths of this streaking around the bodywork. To create some of the flaky rust, I'm using some of this brown iron oxide from Vallejo. It's a pigment, it's a bit of a powder, in combination with this airbrush thinner. Now, in retrospect, don't use that. Use actual Vallejo medium. Uh, that'll give you better results. But this was the first time I tried this thinner because I saw it in a video and uh, wasn't 100% happy with it. And I'm applying this to edges that I think will cop most wear and tear. I'm using some of this rust wash from Vallejo as well 
to create some of the streaks in those flaky rust areas. Now I've just given a slight coat of water to make the rust um, streaks flow a little bit better. I've seen in videos using various different forms of medium for this area, including isopropylene alcohol. Do you have a preference? Do you have any suggestions? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. And I added various strengths of this uh, rusting streaks to the whole body and the tray. With the rust weathering done, we're starting to move on to some of the clear areas. Now the great thing about modern car uh, builds is they provide a mask for the actual windscreens. And a bit of trial and error gets you on there. I was lucky to get it first time. And there's also a mask in there for the actual sunroof. And I'm just masking on the inside so I don't get any overspray on the inside of the clear bits. You don't want that. And I decided I'm going to have one window open. So I'm just using the Dremel tool with the cutting disc and just chopping out an area that I've marked. And with all that done, the actual clear area fits nicely. Now off camera, I did give it a coat of flat black. And I'm glad to report I did not get any overspray on the inside. And let's see how well this mask works. Look at that, sharp. Slight hair bleed there, but still come up great. And for the sliding back window of the ute, I just used some standard masking tape. And the masking came up really well on that. Not that it really matters, because once I add a bit of weathering to the actual windows, you're not going to notice any minor flaws in it anyway. I'm using this gun metal from Ammo, which is a really thick uh, paint to use for dry brushing. And I'm using this on the chassis. I'm not worried too much about the detail on the chassis because the actual pickup truck, or ute in Australia, it's going to be glued down to the base so you won't see the bottom. And to add a bit more detail, I'm using some of that panel line accent colour from Tamiya. It looks great, but a lot of the detail you won't see simply because, like I said, it'll be glued down. And that's the windscreen and sunroof glued in place in the cab. It's come together rather nicely, but I think it does need some windscreen wipers. So for that, I do want to have some weathering, so I need to create a mask. I'm just using the actual windscreen wiper to create the curve that I need. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be close. And just marking where I'm going to put the tape there. Now for the weathering on the actual windscreens, I'm using this Insignia White. And I've really thinned it down with water. I'm just giving a really light coat over the windscreen. And once that dries, I'll wipe most of it off with the cotton bud. These windscreen wipers off camera, I actually gave them a coat of clear flat and also gave them a wash of the brown and also painted the rubber bits black. Now I've printed up these teeny weeny little maps on my little laser printer and onto some plain paper and just using some PVA glue or wood glue uh, to stick them down on the seat because I just want to do some details on the interior of the truck. And I also added some weapons into the interior. And to add a bit more story to the diorama, I'm using some of this balsa wood to simulate, well, timber. 
I'm chopping up into five millimeter widths and I'm just going to pull them up like a stack of lumber and throw them to the back of the ute or pickup truck. The story behind the diorama is a bunch of military guys are out scavenging for bits and pieces when they come across a horde of zombies. Well, my horde consists of only five zombies, but close enough. To glue all the balsa wood together, I'm just using some of this Tarzan grip. Mind you, it is a bit smelly. And to add even more detail to the truck, I've 3D printed this bottle and a Coke can. Or rather, printed quite a few of each. Using my laser printer, I then printed up the branding that goes onto the drinks onto some clear decal paper. Now this section turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it would be. I thought it would be a nightmare sticking the decals onto the bottles, but as soon as I slid it off to its backing, it just wrapped around the bottle. And all I had to do was just even it out with a hobby knife. For the Coke cans, I actually gave them a coat of silver paint off camera and then applied the decals to them. Also a very easy job to do. They are so tiny, but they look awesome. And some more details, I've got these jerry cans that I also 3D printed and gave them a coat of olive green. And for the timber pile, I used some of this light grey for the base colour and then a lighter version of that light grey, which I mixed with white to dry brush the pile. This oil wash from Soilworks, I'll be using that to add some weathering to the jerry cans. And just adding some streaks to the actual spout. And just like I did the rust streaking, I added a bit of water to the surface first before I added the oil wash. With all the bits and pieces done, it was time to assemble everything. And there she is, one very rusty old truck. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. Once again, back onto the PVA glue. I'm using that to glue the timber stack as well as the jerry cans into place. It was time to glue the wheels onto the car, and this is where I ran into a problem. I didn't even bother measuring the tyres to see if they fit, but because of the high rise suspension, they only supplied the big wheels. They didn't supply standard rims, so I had to go and 3D print some wheels and tyres. Luckily for me, on Thingiverse, you can get a whole bunch of rims and various tyres to suit your needs. And the great thing about them is they're actually free, so using Blender, I downloaded the rims and I downloaded the tyres, combined the two and I ended up with my own custom wheels for the actual truck or ute or pickup truck. Once I was happy with them I combined the files and exported them as an STL file and then imported it into Chitterbox which is my 3D printing software. But the tyre is huge so I had to resize them down to 33mm which is the size I needed that suited the truck. Then I raise it off the platform and then move it into the area where I need to add supports. Now normally what I do, I get the software to actually work out the supports and then some areas that it's missed, I go in manually and add uh, little supports there. If you don't add supports in those areas, what happens is it either deforms when you print or doesn't print at all, you end up with holes in your actual print. Not a good thing to have. And once I was happy with all those, what I did was just copy and paste and created my four rims and tires for my truck, centered it, and it was off to get printed. Now 
and there we have it but of course you can't leave them grey so we need to paint them up and weather them so for the rim I'm using this chrome which doesn't really look like chrome but you know after a bit of weathering it's going to be great and black for the tires off camera I airbrushed the rims chrome and then painted the flat black by hand, as you saw. Now to add a bit of weathering, I'm just using some of this pastel chalk on some sandpaper, grounding it down to a fine dust and using this glazed medium and mixing it together to create this thick wash. Now the great thing about this pastel chalk is when the wash actually dries, it leaves like a dust film to the actual tires. And they look really, really awesome. And just a damp cotton bud, or earbud I believe. And I'll wipe off the excess dust that's on the rims. Bit of super glue to glue the rims into place. That's pretty straightforward. And there we have it, the completed first part of our diorama, the weather truck. It's come up really, really well. It's very convincing, I think. So, don't forget, the next part is the completion of this zombie diorama. So in the meantime, check out the hero images. <laughs>